हेलो नमस्कार लेट्स लर्न अबाउट द रेमेडी नेचुरम म्यूरियाटिकम फ्रॉम डॉक्टर एन एम चौधरी इज मेटिका मेडिका एंड एज यू नो डॉक्टर एन एम चौधरी ऑलवेज स्टार्ट हिज एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ एनी रेमेडी विथ फर्स्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट द सोर्स ऑफ द रेमेडी एंड द सोर्स ऑफ नेचुरम म्यूरियाटिकम इज नथिंग बट एन ए सी एल एंड और कॉमन टेबल सॉल्ट सो द सेम सब्सटेंस विच वी इंजेस्ट एवरी डे लेट्स लर्न वॉट आर द सिम्टम्स दैट दिस सब्सटेंस इज कैपेबल ऑफ प्रोड्यूसिंग आफ्टर गेटिंग पोटेंटाइज like right so first we will uh, understand what is the action of nacl that, that is what dr nm chaudhary talks about he tells us that uh, nacl increases the flavor of food yeah obviously and it also increases the quantity and quality of gastric juice secreted after the food has reached the stomach so it also helps in digestion right it increases the quality and quantity of gastric juice now next he goes on to tell us that people who live on the sea shore or who take long voyages are seen to suffer from these conditions so because sea is a uh, salt water a uh, sea has salt water so it also affects the people living around it or people uh, who take long voyage meaning again uh, being around the sea okay or in the sea so the symptoms will are uh, anemia or uh, ulcers of tongue mouth and gums swelling of the gums mapped appearance of tongue skin is harsh dry and parchment like profuse perspiration okay so as we talk about the remedy um, in due course you will also find out that these are the symptoms that our remedy nacl so natremure is capable of producing in patients uh, in provers when potentized okay so the same thing because it is it is just like we uh, learn about toxicology uh, when certain substances are uh, capable of you know producing some poisonous effects poisonous symptoms in their crude form they will cure those kind of symptoms when they are potentized in the same way uh, what sodium chloride does to people around it okay will be the same group of symptoms will be the same kind of symptoms that will be uh, that will be cured by this remedy when it is potentized so your yeah, profuse perspiration uh, mapped appearance of tongue these are certain very characteristic symptoms of natrium you as you will also learn about it as we go ahead okay so that's about the source of natrium muriaticum uh about its action and about the symptoms that people experience or the people who are living around the sea ahead and talking about the emaciation of the remedy this rem- this remedy is very well known for emaciation okay the patient eating well and partaking of everything nutritious and fattening and still this patient loses flesh all the time so even if this patient is eating well taking or the di- taking diet of all sorts you know he is just doing well having a balanced diet or whatever okay still this patient is losing flesh all the time now this loss of flesh is most conspicuous about the neck okay the neck is the thinnest it is this loss of flesh is most commonly seen over here the the neck is thin tall but that kind of neck you can find in natrium mur this gives of a patient a ludicrous unsymmetrical proportion he indeed is an object of pity with this pendulous abdomen with this pendulous abdomen which is suspended from a narrow strip of throat on which is mounted a head no way proportionate to the rest of the body they have this person has swollen lips a bald head he can have okay they are pale wan and anemic they have a dirty leaden hue um which merges uh, into the earthy yellowish complexion be spattered with numerous brown spots so there is there are numerous brown spots on his uh, um, skin the skin is uh, has the skin is this kind of a yellowish complexion the skin is greasy there is weariness complete prostration the patient is powerless prostrated and bedridden so this is a kind of explanation this is a kind of uh, actually a picture that dr nm choudhury paints ahead of, in, in front of us okay so this kind of this person has this kind of an unsymmetrical proportion his head is too large he has a pendulous ab- ab- abdomen and a narrow throat he is pale anemic you know his skin is also yellowish colored yellowish complexion is there brown spots are there and he is very completely prostrated right that's there so this is uh, a little bit about the constitution of this remedy as well because uh, constitution meaning uh, the appearance of this remedy and the emaciation of this remedy also comes uh, also is you know uh, talked about so there is loss of flesh especially around the neck now dr nm choudhury says that in natrium mur okay we have great profusion of perspiration there is 
profuse amount of sweat they sweat so much as to be thoroughly drenched with it so the sweat is very very profuse in natra mode also he talks about the thirst and says that thirst is another peculiarity which is equally great like the sweat of this remedy they drink enormous enormous quantity of water and if you know offer them a glass of water they will invariably drain it dry it is a thirst that is constantly on them and no amount of drink can quench it that is the kind of thirst that natramur has that is the kind of sweat that natramur has profuse sweat profuse sweat drenching him completely and a lot of thirst uh, you give him a glass of water and he is he is going to uh, you know uh, drink every drop of it any time you give him okay so he is thirsty all the time he likes to have a lot of water that's there then uh, we'll talk about the mind of this remedy as dr nm choudhary explains so excessive irritability is there okay this is the first point that dr nm choudhary mentions that natrum moor's mental condition is characterized by excessive irritability there is a kind of lacrimal disposition in them what is the meaning of lacrimal it is a it is a tendency to weep it is weeping crying okay so they cry from slightest causes and get into a passion about trifles so even if a slightest cause happens even if they get little bit offended okay anybody says a little uh, ru- you know even little rude words to them okay they will get offended they will cry, start weeping so even from slightest causes they will weep they will get into a passion about trifles they weep constantly without knowing why they are doing so so this can also happen maybe first of all they get they they weeping from slightest causes or they may weep even without knowing why they are weeping okay you speak to them however gently it simply brings on lacrimal depression so even if you you know you know that this person will cry even if i say a little bit you know even if i don't try to be rude even if i say a little bit so they will start crying so you will try to be gentle with them but however gently you speak with them they have this crying disposition okay you console them thinking it will be welcome obviously when somebody is crying uh, most of the times our reaction uh, is to console them yeah we tell them it's okay yeah we console them but in natural mode if you console them that you're thinking that maybe now they will get better they will feel better but that aggravates the matter and this is completely opposed opposite to pulsatilla pulsatilla likes consolation uh, but if pulsatilla is crying pulsatilla also has a great great weeping disposition but if pulsatilla is crying and you try to console her or whatever she is upset and try to console her she will feel better but it's not so in natramur in fact it's completely opposite if you try to console natramur he will you know it will aggravate him it will not give relief so that's the kind of lacrimal disposition these people have they will cry from slightest causes weep constantly without even knowing the reason and you try to speak to them how however gently they will cry and consolation aggravates which is this is a this is a most important thing. consolation aggravates these patients okay uh awkwardness so uh, these patients are also awkward and awkwardness characterizes all their movements actually like apis bovista they're nervous they will drop things here and there they will break things so they are awkward kind of people they will drop things here and there they will break things they will be nervous and this is also seen in apis bovista and we've used this picture when we were talking about the remedy capsicum because capsicum is also awkward yeah so that's uh, the thing they are awkward they'll drop off things uh, so what did we see they they are first of all excessively irritable they have this lacrimal disposition tendency to cry from slightest causes awkwardness nervous he will drop things down break them then they also have this kind of a hypochondriacal mood so normally what do we mean when we say hypochondriacal we mean to say that uh, a patient or a person actually has a certain kind of a disease uh, suppose he has got um, maybe you can say acidity okay now he really has acidity his ecg is also normal but what will he think that i have i'm going to have a heart attack okay it's heart attack or you know if they have a small eruption and they say they'll say that maybe i have psoriasis maybe i have lichen planus so they they are the hypochondriacs means they are greatly greatly conscious of their health and 
and that is why even when they might not have any kind of disease they will feel that they have something they will get anxious over it they will think that i have may i maybe i have this maybe i have that kind of a this, this disease so that is what we we understand by hypochondriac okay so basically it means that when you don't have anything still you are anxious about something big or something that you have some disease when you don't really have any so that's what hypochondriac uh, mood uh, you know uh, is uh, referred to as but over here dr nm chandni uses it uh, to say like now when you, when we understand this para you'll understand what he means by hypochondriacal mood over here so natural mood finds a sort of happiness in indulging in sad and painful thoughts okay they try to recollect past disagreeable occurrences to be able to think over them brood over them and then indulge in grief they cause so see right now this person has no a uh, grief like right now there is nothing wrong going on in his life okay but what he will do is he will he will recollect past disagreeable occurrences he will recollect something which happened in the past which was not uh, you know uh, good to him which was which made which had made him sad back then and he will think over it again brood over it again and brooding over it again will obviously again give him you know uh, make him feel that same sadness and that's that's how he will again indulge in grief that these thoughts cause so over here also like in hypochondriacs uh, we say that they do not have anything but still they are anxious so in this way here also there is nothing to be sad of at the present moment in natural mood but what they do is they'll go back in the past recollect things and then they brood over those things because there's a fine kind of sort of happiness that they find in sad and painful thoughts now what is a uh, happiness that you find okay you cannot find happiness in sad and painful thoughts is what we understand but what happens is when a patient has uh, gone through a long period of grief okay then what happens is they become uh, comfortable in that kind of a situation okay and uh, we do not want to change that is how humans are we do not want to change now when they have been so accustomed to the grief and living with the grief that living without the grief is something very uncomfortable to them so that is comfort for them now so that is why they'll go back to those sad and painful thoughts brood over them and indulge in the grief that they cause so that will be the whole idea that will be what what will be happening in these patients to these patients so now over here the important thing and interesting thing is that this sadness is hypochondriacal mood that is this mood that they want to go back into the past tick recollect it all and brood over it again is associated with constipation and palpitation so when they have kind of constipation uh, they tend to have this hypochondriacal mood a lot more okay or you, you can also say vice versa so when they have this phase when they are big, having this hypochondriacal mood okay feeling it a lot more uh, they will start feel, uh, you know having constipation or palpitation so that's there also now these people are now you can see you can on the basis of this you can understand these people are disheartened they are gloomy they are apprehensive they taciturn they quarrel some a uh, quarrel some vindictive also okay these patients seek solitude so these patient like to be alone okay they they are natural mood are kind of people who like to be alone like to brood over sad thoughts okay that's the whole idea then going on to the last point about mind which dr nm chaudhary tells us which is about the memory so there is great impairment of mental faculty in these patients they are disinclined to undertake mental work of any kind however when forced to work so first of all they do not want to work okay they disinclined to take any on any mental work and they have uh, also impairment of the mental faculty their memory has gone down but however when forced to work what will happen is they will make mistakes they will show evident confusion so mistakes they will make they will have, be confused they will betray entire loss of memory so this will happen in these patients so memory is also a problem so under mind we talked about a few points like first we talked about the excessive irritability that these people have then we talked about the lacrimal disposition the awkwardness right there was lacrimal disposition they they like to cry they cry on slightest causes or even without cause and consolation aggravates them was an important point then we talked about the awkwardness that we find in this remedy they will drop off things here and there and which are the other remedies important remedies which have uh, awkwardness apis and bovista 
but capsicum also has it because and capsicum was this the remedy in which we use this picture so capsicum also has it and now you know that natrium mood also has it then we'll talk about the hypochondriacal mood that this remedy has and then uh, finally about the memory next moving on to the headache of this remedy which is also an important sphere of action head is also an important sphere of action of this remedy and these patients tend to have headaches uh, so natrium mood headaches are very commonly known actually so headache of anemic school girls natrium mood uh, in most of the most of the times what happens is uh, the uh, school girls meaning the adolescent aged girls uh, have anemia okay and these patients these girls uh, complain of headache so uh, when these girls the pa uh, patients of this age, age group come to you they also have anemia they complaining of headache then you can have a presentation of natrium mood among these patients okay one of the patient at least must have must be pretty, uh, you know presenting to you with a picture of natrium mood maybe maybe present so now what happens uh, headache or migraine is actually uh, actually has a few a uh, few stages kind of of you you know we, we uh, uh, systematically you know uh, differentiate it into a few stages like there is aura so what is aura aura is something that happens just before the actual pain of migraine starts okay that is called as aura the headache the actual headache before it starts the group of symptoms that you get are aura now here over here in natrium mood we see that these patients before the pain actual actual pain starts there is blindness so they will like kind of have this kind of a sensation of blindness they will not be able to see things uh, rightly uh this is also seen in kaliba iris gelsemium and lac defloratum so these patients also have a uh, blindness as their aura before migraine okay the sensation that anatrium mood has is very interesting they feel like a thousand hammers were knocking against the brain so that is the feeling in anatrium mood they feel like a thousand hammers knocking against the brain modalities are that this patient has a periodical headache it will you know uh, it will repeat or at the same time or uh, in at the interval of same uh, number of days sometimes it starts in the morning and lasts till the e last till evening uh, because natrium also has sun headache it, it, this is called a sun headache because as long as the sun is out there these patients can have headache due to the sun okay due to the heat of the sun due to the sun rays so sometimes it starts in the morning and lasts till the evening this periodical kind of a headache what happens during the headache during the headache there is great rush of blood to head and the arteries throb mercilessly so there is throbbing kind of pain okay the arteries are throbbing and these patients can feel it and obviously this sensation is present uh, when they have headache they feel like a thousand hammers for hammers okay a thousand hammers were knocking against the brain the intensity of headache is you know great the the headache is very very violent the intensity of headache is concern actually there it is not inferior to any remedy okay uh, dr n m choudhary says that i might as well remark here that natrium mure is inferior to no other remedy when the intensity of the headache is concerned it is so violent that they become even maniacal so this headache intensity is so so much so violent that the patients may turn maniacal and in when they turn maniacal they will speak in a blasphemous language okay now what does blasphemous mean blasphemous means that whenever anybody talks about anything sacred or god in a disrespectful way then it is called blasphemous language uh, these patients when have great intensity of headache violent kind of headache they become maniacal and they talk in a blasphemous language their tongue becomes dry and clings to the roof of the mouth and they have intermittent pulse especially during the headache okay their tongue will become dry it will cling to the roof of the mouth and they'll also have intermittent pulse so this is about the headache the aura is blindness they will have the sensation of hammers hitting on their head periodical headache morning till evening and throbbing pain void in maniacal blasphemous language tongue becomes dry clings to the mouth intermittent pulse okay next moving on to the symptoms of uh, natrium mur uh, and the action of natrium mur on eye so we must remember natrium mur has a great action on eye okay eye is actually one of the sphere of actions because it produces many symptoms when acting on the eye uh, we see that there is weak so dr n m choudhury says that there is weakness in muscles of eye 
okay and he also tells us which muscles so the recti muscles are weak so this is our eyeball you can see this is our eyeball and these are the muscles around it so this one over here is the inferior recti muscle and this one over here is a superior recti muscle and there's weakness in these muscles of the eye especially this these recti muscles and the other muscles are also there uh, so this is the levator super superiorius yeah levator palpebrae superioris and we also have the superior oblique over here and the lateral rectus okay this is the lateral we, I, we did not talk about it so this is uh, inferior rectus this is lateral and this is superior we also have inferior oblique right so these are the different muscles of eye and lateral muscle will cause the weakness in these muscles of eye and especially the recti muscles the lateral recti the inferior and the superior okay uh, so that's important this this weakness of the muscles of in the muscles of eye and as a consequence of that this patient will have asthenopia ambilopia amor amoral so asthenopia here simply means a strain so eye strain whenever your eyes are strained because you know you are seeing a lot of mobile you know screen mobile a screen a lot of screen time is there so uh, like that that kind of that kind of things so asthenopia has this kind of uh, uh, eye strain the eyes are getting strained obviously because there's weakness in muscles of eye also ambilopia is again a kind of uh, you know you're not able to see properly there's some problem because the eye has not developed rightly amoros is, is again uh, a problem in uh, vision uh, that is maybe blindness uh, due to the uh, optic nerve involvement or you know the spinal cord involvement or brain involvement so all that can be maybe there that may be there uh, so anything can happen but uh, asthenopia especially because of the weakness in the muscles of eye so as a consequence of this especially as uh, eyes will not be able to strain properly they they'll they will not be able to accommodate properly the muscle will not be able to contract and relax properly and that is why will have eye strain so that will is that is what will happen the vision is obscure objects look dim and as through as though they are seen through a gauze or veil so over here in uh, natural mule the objects will look as if they are seen through a veil or a gauze okay they will look dim there will be other uh, vision will be obscure the ailments from is the abuse of silver nitrate now what is this so uh, there is a practice of washing a newborn's eyes with 2% of agno3 okay the, and that is that is done protect against neonatal conjunctivitis which is caused by nesaria gonorrhea now obviously oh, even uh, just uh, only if his mother has it and only if he has the risk of having nesaria gonorrhea infection only then this uh, baby has you know uh, has been you know uh, abuse of agno3 has been done on on his eyes and if that has been done and this baby grows up and tells you that he has some you know you understand that he has some vision related issues then and the symptoms also match you can think of natremule now in these patients the lids are swollen is profuse mucopurulent discharge so sore the lids are so sore that they look like raw beef so they are so reddened they look like raw beef there is chemosis which means swelling of conjunctiva uh, especially due to accumulation of fluid which is an, as an allergic reaction uh, there is a lot of lacrimation in these patients okay natremule has this characteristic symptom of intense lacrimation okay great sensitiveness smarting sensation of sand in the eyes sensation of sand in the eyes is there eyes close spasmodically and it becomes difficult to force them open like argentine nitricman graphitis so uh, there is weakness in the muscles of eye especially the inferior lateral superior recti muscles the consequences asthenopia they, the eyes get strained because of that uh, there can be ambilopia amaurosis also blindness vision can be obscured as though they feel as though seeing through a gauze or veil right seeing through a gauze or veil and abuse of agno3 if they do then the symptoms may be produced and that if the picture matches to the uh, natremule symptoms you can give the remedy to help the patient lids get swollen and look as if look like raw beef there is also mucopurulent discharge uh, coming from the eyes chemosis the swelling of conjunctiva due to accumulation of fluid which is basically an allergic reaction can be an allergic reaction in this case in natremule there is intense lacrimation in these patients great sensation of smarting sensation of sand in the eyes all right uh moving ahead 
let's talk about the action of natremure on mucous membranes over here there is cataral inflammation which takes place and leads to hyper secretion of mucus so there is hyper secretion of mucus in these patients this fluent coryza meaning the nose will keep discharging fluently so your patient gets cold and cough uh, so he he may be get getting get in, you know got some uh, got got infected and now he is having this fluent coryza Alternating with attacks of sneezing, there's loss of smell, loss of taste, frequent hawking of mucus from throat, sensation of plug in throat. So they feel as if there is a plug in their throat, which is causing choking. Redness of tonsils will be there. Elongation of uvula, and obviously along with this, uh, in natremure, when you have to prescribe for cold and cough, you'll obviously also see the thirst. because physical generals do matter a lot. So the thirst, as we've already uh, talked about, is great. Yeah, uh, he is very very thirsty. we already know we also talked about the tongue but we talked about it when we were uh, when we were you know looking at the symptoms that the patients uh, or the, the people sorry the people living around the seashore have so that one of the symptoms was a mapped tongue so mapped tongue can also be present in the patients when you they come to you for cold and cough and if it is present you can obviously be sure of natremure and it is not necessarily present in every patient uh, when natremure is indicated but if it's present so map tongue is very very um, characteristic of natremure acting on the nat uh, urinary system natremure actually produces weakness of bladder okay and as a consequence of this weakness of bladder see you we have seen that it also produces weakness in the muscles of the eye now we are seeing that it is producing weakness of bladder and as a consequence of that there is involuntary escape of urine on laughing on coughing on sneezing like in causticum pulsatilla dumex now when this uh, uh, weakness is exaggerated we have what is known as con incontinence and urine will flow incessantly necessitating frequent change of clothes so they'll have to change the clothes very frequently because there's so much of flow of urine incontinence going on and it is somewhat similar like what we find in causticum pulsatilla dumex and in the same ready uh, remedy an opposite condition can also exist which is difficulty in the expulsion of urine they might have difficulty in the expulsion of urine they have to wait ever so long and press ever so hard wait ever so long press ever so hard to get the flow started like embragrisia hepatitis or muriatic acid so this can also be there they are they they're just waiting for the flow to start but it's not starting they're straining for it but it's not starting that can also be their difficulty in the expulsion or they can be involuntary escape so both the conditions uh, not in the same patient but yeah, it can be there in natremure increased desire to urinate during prolapse so uterine prolapse is also something that we see in this remedy and we'll talk about it in the next uh, part of this video the part 2 of natremuretic from dr m dr n choudhury's materia medica in which we are going to talk about the female related symptoms the male related symptoms the digestive tract related symptoms of this remedy and much more the fever especially of this remedy the natremure is very well known for malarial fevers right it was used for malarial fevers especially so we'll talk about that also in the next uh, part but for now understand that it has uh, this increased desire to urinate during prolapse so whenever any patient is suffering from uterine prolapse during that uh, there is a concomitant symptom there is an associated symptom actually of increased desire to urinate also uh so that's the situation they can be involuntary escape they can be that is what we call as in they can be incontinence they cannot hold the uh urine inside or they can be opposite con condition which is in which there is difficulty in the expulsion of urine okay so let's now just revise or uh, uh, started talking about the source of natremure which is uh, nacl the common table salt and common table salt act acts on our, us uh acts on uh, Act, its action is actually first of all to increase the flavor of food and it acts on us to increase the gastric juices increase the quality as well as quantity of gastric juices that is what we saw in the very start of the video and then we also saw that people living on the sea shore have a list of you know can suffer from a list of things like anemia they can have anemia they can have a mapped tongue which is also a characteristic symptom of natremure we they have profuse perspiration right swelling of gums ulcer of gums all of that is also present mapped tongue okay then we went on to talk about the emaciation of natremure which is uh, actually something that natremure is greatly known for emaciation so there is emaciation there is loss of flesh no matter 
how much ever they eat this loss of flesh is mostly majorly seen on the neck and the neck is very thin and it looks as if the pendulous abdomen is you know hanged on through a strip on the strip of uh, you know a throat and there's a huge head on the on the throat which the body cannot actually uh, take on it's like unsymmetrical proportion is there so that's the situation the lips are swollen there's brownish spots all over the body there's yellowish complexion because they're pale they're anemic and because of a lot of anemia you'll obviously be prostrated they're very weak uh, they have they have this greasy kind of a skin they have dirty leading hue merging into the earthly yellow complexion that they have okay uh, they also have a bald head uh bald head okay so these are the symptoms these are the emaciation related symptoms or you can also uh think of it like constitution related symptoms of natremure uh moving ahead we talked about the sweat and the thirst of this remedy the sweat is profuse and the thirst is also profuse both are profuse and then we talked about the mind related symptoms the mental condition of this remedy in which we talked about the irritability which they have great irritability that they have then we talked about the lacrimal disposition of this remedy this remedy has this disposition to weep weep a lot they weep constantly without any reason also and consolation also aggravates them this is an important point then we talked about the hypochondriacal mood also hypochondriacal mood may we talked about how they will you know recollect the past disagreeable thoughts or occurrences and they will brood them brood over it again and finally will again be sad because of that then we also saw about how they are awkward like apis and bovista they will drop things here and there they will you know break things and the whole thing is a whole situation is there and in a hypochondriac mood another one important point we saw was that this a whole situation is more when they are constipated is actually you know accompanied by constipation or and palpitation they are awkward and then the fifth or the last point was related to the memory these people have kind of impairment of the memory and uh, they they do not want to work and when they are forced to work they will make mistakes in the work they will be confused or they will have again this loss of memory which is will be evident which will be you know very easily seen that's there then we talked about the eyes because natremur has a great action on eyes and we saw that this these patients especially have the weakness of muscles of eye right and especially the muscles were recti muscles so this is the inferior recti the lateral recti and the superior recti and there will be weakness in these leading to asthenopia the eyes will have to strain a lot then vision is obscure vision is gone down the objects will look dim and they will uh, they will you know feel that as if they are seeing through a veil or a gauze that will be the situation the lids are swollen mucopurine discharge is there the lids are so swollen sorry the lids are so swollen that they will look like raw beef we saw about talked about the chemosis meaning the conjunctiva getting inflamed because of a allergic kind of reaction is there there is intense lacrimation in this patients meaning there is a lot of tear uh, tears dropping from the eyes even when they are not crying so this intense lacrimation in these patients we also saw that there is sensation of sand in the eye sensation of sand in the eye yeah then we talked about the action of uh, natremur on the mucous membranes where we saw that it causes catarrhal kind of inflammation and we saw that it uh, leads to you know a lot of fluent coryza there's also uh, sneezing there's loss of taste there's a lot of loss of smell and there's redness of tonsils there's a sensation of plug in throat right along with that there you will have the thirst of the remedy and you'll also have the uh, tongue of the remedy most of the times present okay uh, these this were about the eye the mucous membrane related symptoms that we saw then we talked about the uh, finally about the urinary system in which we talked about the weakness of bladder that they have which will again lead to incontinence 
or oppose it they can also be uh, difficulty to urinate so how much ever the weight for the urine to pass and strain for the urine to pass the urine is not coming out and during the prolapse is increased desire to urinate and one thing we forgot uh, while talking about or revising is the headache of this remedy so there's a very very important thing that there is headache in this remedy the aura has blindness like many other remedies which included calibi lacdef idis gelsemium okay we saw that there is a sensation as if a lot of hammers thousand hammers are you know uh, are knocking onto the head the modalities were that the uh, fee, uh, headache lasts from uh, morning till evening and uh, periodical headache is also there during the headaches they have a throbbing kind of a pain the headaches are so violent that they will become maniacal and might even you know uh, speak in a blasphemous language right the tongue becomes dry especially during the headache dry tongue which will you know cling to the roof of the mouth and intermittent pulse will be there so this is what we learned when we talked about the remedy natrum muriaticum the emaciation and the whole situation uh, we will talk about uh, many re uh, more uh, symptoms related to natrum mur in the next part of uh, natrum mur by dr nm choudhury's material from dr nm choudhury's material medica uh, i'll meet you then bye bye